Welcome to the all new 2025 Infiniti QX80. It is the largest thing they have. It is their flagship vehicle. And it's been over a decade since we've seen an all new version of this. So let's talk about what's under the hood for this generation. It is now a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Prints out 450 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. And Infiniti says this is the most amount of torque any of their vehicles have ever had runs through a nine speed automatic transmission. The old engine was a 5.6 liter V8 and that put out 400 horsepower and 413 pound feet of torque through a seven speed automatic. So big differences here and all wheel drive still does come standard. Now, as an interesting note, Infiniti says they've borrowed inspiration for this engine from the old Q50 Red Sport. Well, Good and great, but I think it's the emission regulations that made them get rid of that massive 5.6 liter V8. As far as driving impressions, it's still a full-size SUV, and it feels like one, but it doesn't drive as big and heavy as, say, the Navigator or the Escalade. Now, there's still plenty of heft to this, and it is extremely heavy at almost 6,000 pounds, but it still has a good amount of power to it, and that huge boost in torque definitely does come in handy. Towing capacity comes in at 8,500 pounds. The new Navigator, which is out sometime early in 2025, is supposed to tow up to 8,700 pounds. But that's just figures on the Lincoln website. Gotta wait till the actual production vehicle comes out. But back to the QX80. I'm at a stoplight and let's do a quick acceleration test. Not for speed, just for a little bit of sound and feel. There it goes. There it is. So again, it's moving almost 6,000 pounds. I'm happy they've tuned the engine the way they did. So with any of the competitors in this segment, there'll be no shortage of power at all because this isn't made only for driving yourself, your partner, and a couple of kids around, right? If you're looking at this, you're probably towing something fairly frequently and you need the functionality and capability side of things. Thankfully, and I'll go into more of this on the tech side, there are plenty of camera views and there is a see-through hood camera view that comes standard. So if you're trying to navigate this into a bit of a tighter parking space or a parallel park, or you don't want to hit a curb when you're pulling in, you just push a couple of buttons, you get your camera view and you are all set. It's fairly quiet in the cabin, both at city and highway speeds. If by chance you do find it to be a little too loud and you get one of the two higher trims, you get a 24 speaker audio system. The base trim comes with a 14 speaker audio system. Now I'm in the top trim autograph, so I don't know how powerful the 14 speaker system is, but 24 of a speaker system is definitely where it's at. For something so tall, so long and so wide, the driving impressions are pretty good. Now it's not as squishy and soft and fluffy as let's say the Navigator or Escalade, but it's not as hard and as rigid as the Lexus TX. Their standard electronic air suspension, which definitely helps the ride quality here. Good job, Infinity, for making that electronic air suspension standard. On the exterior, Infinity's gone tall and boxy, which is very familiar with the new Nissan lineup. So gone are all of the curves and soft lines, and again, a very upright, to me, kind of looks a little on the rigid side. Infinity says they've taken inspiration from a lot of the Japanese culture as far as how they've designed this. Um, the grill is very tall and you'll notice a lot of straight lines. I like that they've still kept some familiarity of the Infinity design language overall, but it's heavily modernized here. There's no Infinity logo on the rear, it just spells out the word Infinity, but there is a tiny little Infinity logo in the light housing on both sides of the rear lamps. A miss for me are the electronic door handles. Sure, it looks cool and it improves aerodynamics just a little bit, but if that motor breaks or there's a lot of ice or something causes it to not move anymore, doesn't really make for the best situation. Last touch on the outside is that Infinity has put a long light bar along the rear, and I think it adds just enough flair to look good without being overbearing or just looking kind of out of place. Onto the interior. So let's start from the front and go to the rear. Two 14.3 inch screens greet you as soon as you sit down. Left side being the digital instrument cluster, right side being the infotainment system. And in typical Infinity fashion, they have that lower screen 
I don't mind it because it's capacitive touch and you get a little bit of muscle memory there. I prefer hard touch buttons, but I know why Infinity didn't opt for that. Just it's not what's in and what's stylish right now as far as luxury automotive design. Uh, the weird thing is almost the entire lower screen is for your HVAC except for one little portion and that controls your drive modes and it's the furthest button away from the driver. So a little odd on that. Now to the infotainment system, it's fairly quick and responsive and there's not too, too much digging. And it is definitely an upgrade over the previous generation. A cool design move here, and I don't know if everybody will like it as much as I do. There was a little button on the steering wheel on the right side and you push either the left side or the right side of it. And if you push the left side of it, a little orange light comes on. If you push the right side, a little orange light comes on there. And by pushing it to the right side, that allows you to control the infotainment system through a little scroll wheel on the steering wheel itself. And kind of like the Mercedes system, I don't see heavy usage on this piece of technology because it's so much faster just to reach out and do everything through the screen itself. Thanks to the new squarish oval shaped steering wheel, you can see everything in the instrument cluster through the hole in the steering wheel and it's a lot better than having to maneuver your head to try and catch things in the corners and the framing around the instrument cluster as well as the infotainment system also has a nice clean design lots of lines um, not overbearing but just again enough to show that infinity has put some thought into this instead of just leaving it blank or gone with the easy out with a carbon fiber finish. Your front passenger will see the word infinity right in front of them. Nice little design move and a nice little flare as far as how the top of the pair of 14.3 inch screens just tapers down a little bit and meets the rest of the dashboard line. Head up display does come standard for all trims as does the large panoramic sunroof here. A miss for me are the buttons to change gears and it's just beneath the HVAC screen. A lot of panel black happening there. And I know it just seems to be a heavy hand traffic area because it's got the HVAC system just above it. It's got the wireless charging bay just beneath it. I'm not really a big fan of it. I realize that it's there to create a lot more space and have a lot more functionality, but you know, I prefer anything except for buttons. Another little miss is there's no cutout for your cable there. So if you have your cable plugged in and you close that charging port door, your cable is going to get pinched. Seats are exceptionally comfortable, both first row, second row, and pretty good for the third row and full power here. Obviously, if you're in the six figure range for a full size SUV, I uh, get a standard heated steering wheel. You get standard heated front seats, standard heated second row outboard seats. And overall, I think Infinity has done pretty well here as far as creating an inviting upscale and luxury space. On to the second row. And if you opt for the autograph trim, which is the highest, you get captain's chairs as opposed to a bench as you'd get in the base trim and mid trim. The miss here is that the little tablet is fixed. It doesn't come out, it can't pop out. And yeah, it's great and nice, but it would have been a little better just to have a little more on the functionality side. You also get your USB ports and the seats recline and their power seats as well. And Infinity says as far as moving the second row of seats forward, they go up and forward to give you the most amount of entrance space to the third row in class. So definitely a good move there. On to the third row and there's three seats and the middle seat gets their roof mounted seat belt. And this autograph trim does have two stage heated seats for the third row. If you look at the switch gear, it's straight out of Nissan. And well, I guess it's a cost saving things to share parts. And you sit a little higher up. so. Again, if you are going to have somebody in that third row more often, definitely look at getting the trim that has the digital rear view mirror. Quick touch on cargo space. So you get 623 liters with all seats up. Put that third row down, it's 1,670. You put the third and second row down, and that balloons all the way up to 2,680. Quick touch on standard safety, which includes automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, high beam assist, rear cross traffic alert, rear automatic braking, invisible hood view, which I'd mentioned in the driving portion, uh, traffic sign recognition and driver alert warning. So thank you, Infinity, for not nickel and diming us on standard safety in your luxury vehicle. Quick touch on fuel consumption before we go into pricing and competition. 
So on an 89 liter fuel tank of premium fuel, the Infiniti QX80 gets 15.1 liters per 100 kilometers on city streets, dips down to 12.2 on the highway for a combined average of 13.8. And dividing 13.8 by the 89 liter fuel tank, you can go 644 kilometers, give or take, on a full tank of fuel. So not awful, but um, you know, not a big difference between this and the old 5.6 liter V8. On to the pricing side of things, and these are the Canadian MSRP figures. 104.995 for the Lux, 113.995 for the Sensory, and a range topping 124.995 for the Autograph. There is a $2,495 freight and PDI fee, and all three trims are subject to Canada's luxury tax. So keep that in mind as you do your build if you are looking to buy one of these. Let's touch on the competition. So first up is the Cadillac Escalade. And there are five trims to choose from, and they go from 115.040 to 159.674. I did not include the ESV, which is their long wheelbase, and I definitely did not include the V version of the Escalade. Um, I will say that it runs off a 6.2 liter V8. Power figures are definitely lower with the Escalade at 420 and 460. Again, not for the V trim. And I think that's gonna be the QX80's biggest competitor. We have the all new Navigator, which isn't out yet. I'm recording this in the middle of November and Lincoln Canada says the new Navigator is out in early 2025. That could be Jan, Feb or March. But know that it runs off a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Power figures are 440 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque. So pretty close to what we have here in the QX80. And again, the possible 8,700 pounds of towing. The Navigator comes in at 123,500, which is an increase of $5,000 over the 2024 model. And if you want the long wheelbase, that's all the way up to 127,500. Again, comes out in early 2025. A pair of distant competitors from Lexus, I have the TX coming in around $70,000, and that's a good $35,000 less than what we have here. The same thing goes for the new Lexus GX, around the 80,000 mark. Same thing, not a direct line like we have with the Escalade and the Navigator, but still in the larger realm of things. And then there's the Grand Wagoneer going from the mid 90s to the mid 110s. As of today, when I looked at the Jeep Canada website, it had a 2023 model. So I don't know what the future is gonna hold for Jeep as a brand at all, specifically the Grand Wagoneer, but it's definitely up there with the Escalade and Navigator. Overall, Infinity's done well here with their all new QX80. It drives exceptionally well. There's plenty of power. There's plenty of functionality. The liftability factor is pretty good. There's a few things I'd change and being the push button gear selector, the location of the wireless charging bin, um, a couple of other nitpicks, but on the whole, the space is good. The features and technology are great. The mile long list of standard safety definitely gets high marks for me. Part of the hurdle for Infinity with the QX80 is just reminding people that it exists and that it's all new because the old one was around for over a decade. And yes, we have an all new Lincoln Navigator and the Escalades do for something new in the next couple of years, but they've always been in the forefront. You know, yes, I know the QX80 had a fairly big upgrade. I think it was 2021 uh, with the interior, but as a generation, it was around for you know, over 10 years. So I hope that people at least put the Infiniti QX80 on their list and that they're reminded that it is all new. It's hard to shake that old Oh, I don't think the QX80 was new. I thought it was the same one as it was in 22, in 20, in 18, 16, and so on and so on. So with that, I'm hoping that this does something for the Infinity brand as far as bringing it higher up on the recognition scale. That's going to wrap it up for the 2025 Infinity QX80. If you have any questions on the vehicle, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get you answers as soon as possible. I invite you to join our social media communities. We are on all of the major platforms. Thank you. I appreciate you. And without you, there is no me. So with that, thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.